Ukraine's new success in drone warfare scared Russians and the Russian army was left defenseless. The Ukrainian military has learned to destroy Russian reconnaissance UAVs using modified FPV drones. The Ukrainians often began to shoot down our wings. This is too alarming a signal. People do not die from such actions, but the consequences may be more serious than from the delivery of dozens of Abrams, wrote Russian military correspondent Alexander Karchenko in his Telegram channel. According to him, this could send the Russians back a generation when the Russian armed forces will fight in two-dimensional space while the Ukrainians will wage war in 3D. It also helps the Ukrainian armed forces that FPV drones are cheaper than reconnaissance drones and can replace other weapons. Karchenko said that FPV drones can accelerate to 500 km an hour, putting enemy UAVs, including the geranium, in danger. The military correspondent also complained that the Ukrainian defenders were planning to shoot down enemy attack helicopters when they flew close to the front. Another advantage of fighter drones is their mobility and stealth. Their use does not require multi-ton vehicles, which in modern conditions cannot be hidden. Two people on motorcycles is already an air defense weapon that is very difficult to detect, he explained. According to Karchenko, the most dangerous thing is that the Ukrainians have established a system for detecting and destroying enemy drones. Without them, an FPV drone at an altitude of several thousand meters will not be able to find a target. At the same time, the Russians themselves have nothing to protect their wings. According to the general staff, the most tense situation is now in the Pokrovsky direction, the invaders are trying to break through air defensive lines near Novo Aleksandrovka, Evgenovka, Sokol, and Umansky. At the same time, in the Serebriansky forest in the Luhansk region, there is an advance of the defense forces. The brigade units advanced one kilometer in depth and two kilometers along the front, thereby completing one of the stages of offensive operations in their direction. In addition, the defense forces pushed the enemy back from the village of Lipsy in the Kharkov region. Russian nationalists demand from Kremlin that the country's nuclear missiles be aimed at U.S. cities. A group of Russian National Liberation Movement, NOD members, chanted and marched through the streets calling for Russian nuclear warheads and missiles to be pointed at American cities. The anti-Western nationalist group was seen marching through the rain while listing the warheads they want directed at U.S. cities. A protest leader shouts in Russian, Yaz, Samat, Poseidon, we are aiming at Washington, referring to RS-24 Yaz missiles, which can carry multiple nuclear warheads, RS-28 Samat intercontinental ballistic missiles and Poseidon torpedoes. Members of the pro-Kremlin Nod group, founded by Yevgeny Fyodorov, carried a black and orange striped flag with some, like the leader, pinning it to their shirts. The ribbon of St. George, which has a long history of commemorating World War II veterans, has become a symbol of Russian nationalism and militarism in recent years and in 2017 was banned in Ukraine. In a meeting with the country's foreign ministry leadership, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned, we have come unacceptably close to the point of no return, referencing Russia's threat to deploy nuclear weapons. John Isaacs, senior fellow at the Center for Arms Control and Non-Proliferation, a non-partisan non-profit aiming to reduce nuclear threats, told Newsweek in a phone interview that Putin's recent rhetoric and warnings are threats trying to affect NATO and US behavior. He added that in light of the agreement, Putin, I believe, is doing everything he can to pretend that United States, if you don't behave, you're going to suffer consequences. He said the threat is one of the few moves Putin has left. In the absence of some victory or taking over Ukraine, the best Putin can do is threaten. Isaacs said the United States should treat it as a false flag, a threat that is not going to be carried through, that cannot be carried through for Russia and the United States' sake. If Putin started using nuclear weapons, he would die. So would a lot of people in Russia. A lot of people in the United States or NATO would die. In other words, it's suicidal for any country.